Welcome to the Wellness Revolution Podcast. Jerry from Host mm-hmm. Defense. Jerry Angelini, is that yep. how you say it? Angelini of Host Defense? Yeah. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to post this. And so now that people can come on and listen to us and watch us, I wonder if everybody can see Jerry there. All right. Well, let's talk anyway. Jerry, go ahead and talk. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> my name, again, is Jerry Angelini, and I'm the Education Director at Host Defense. Um, I have a Master's of Science in Rehabilitation uh, from Boston University. Uh, I've studied at a couple of acupuncture schools uh, just to kind of get the different uh, approaches. Um, I don't set needles. Uh, I'm not licensed as an acupuncturist, uh, so uh, I don't put myself out there as that, but I do, and I have studied uh, traditional Chinese medicine, Western herbs, Ayurvedic herbs, and Chinese herbs for, I've been doing that for 30 years now. So uh, yeah. definitely, been, I know, right? I've been in the both fields, both the traditional Western and uh, some of the integrative practices for decades now. It's been yeah. a lot of fun. So I just want to um, talk a bit for people who are out and jumping in and watching. Um, I'm talking with Jerry Angelini. He just gave a nice introduction. And what I wanted to do is talk about mushrooms. So this winter, um, as every winter, people are getting sick. And um, I tell people I've mastered the 12-hour cold. Or let me say, you know, I can, I can get something. Some people say, I never get sick. Well, I'm not one of those people that says, I never get sick. I'll get something that will come on, but it's rare that it will take me down, okay? So the last time was last week. I went on a, you know, a flight across the country and then a flight back. And as I'm on the flight, on my red eye, coming back, all of a sudden, <laughs> the sniffles are coming on. And yeah. so, well, what do you do when you have these types right. of situations? It's common for people to get sick on f- airplanes um, mm-hmm. for a couple of reasons. One is because going across time zones is stressful to your immune system. Um, the other thing is when you're in the airplane, and it's not really the recirculated air, but here's what happens. When you're close to other people, you know, you got all the stuff aerosolized. So if you have somebody directly next to you who's sick, or guess what, somebody got off the plane and you touch what they touch, a few rows, you can get sick and this is what happens. But just being stressed across time zones and being exposed is something that could pound on your immune system. And so that's just one thing that happens to people. But on the other side, here we are, it's winter and, um, you know, everybody's, people are coughing and hacking and there's cold and there's flu and there's sinusitis and bronchitis and all this stuff that's going around. And there are some people who they just get taken down and out every single year by these. And there are other people who figure out that, hey, I get a little something and I'm one of those people, I'll get a little something and then I'll like know what to do to nip it in the butt. So one of my secrets in my toolkit, and I'm gonna put up where you can get the Wardall Colds and Flu Toolkit because um, it has a bunch of things in there. But this is one of my secret sauces. It's the mushroom spray from Host Defense. So um, I realized that I know little bits about mushrooms, but not enough for my own academic knowledge. But when people say things that I know are wrong, I want to always have that data in my mind to be able to say, well, that's not quite right because, and then Jerry's going to send me all the papers about that. So Jerry has been with Host Defense for about seven years. He's been an educator for Host Defense. You see what I do? I go right to the source, you know, of the company and get the people who are at the company who can teach us about this. Now, one thing I like about dealing with supplement companies, and Jerry's going to make sure he keeps it compliant and in supplement speak, but one thing I like about dealing with supplement companies, I got to tell you, I find the integrity of many of the companies much higher than I found of pharmaceutical companies. Um, it's, it's very educational. They always are, you know, the, the, the papers aren't just all paid for by the drug company or something like that. And things like um, natural things, herbs, mushrooms, um, things like that, vitamins, minerals, they've been around since the beginning of time. And so therefore, we're not talking about something that was 
made into something else. We're talking about the natural source that people have walked around since the beginning of mankind to use these to spur their health. And so today I want to talk a little bit about mushrooms. I want to talk about, you know, people say if they, oh, they have an allergy or, oh my God, I have fungus or I have candida. Can I use these type of things? So, so let, me, let me jump right in. Let's talk about first. What do you think is the most important thing people need to know about mushrooms? Uh, so mushrooms, depending upon how they're grown and then uh, manufactured, can be amazing modulators or balancers of your immune response. And so the immune response is a really, really complex system of the body. There are lots of different cells. These cells secrete messenger molecules that trigger inflammatory responses. But it also has a set of checks and balances designed to keep it from overreacting. So we want to keep the immune system in like this Goldilocks zone. Not too hot, not too cold, it's got to be just right. And many, uh, well, the host defense product, let's talk about that because we've been doing research on our product, uh, mm -hmm. has been shown to support the key immune cells that help us fight off like bacterial and viral pathogens, uh, but also to help us identify cells that have mutated and kill them. And the product also engages the checks and balances to make sure that immune system doesn't overreact to things like environmental triggers, maybe it's animal dander or pollen, or maybe even a food trigger. So the product is super safe for like long-term use to keep your immune system right in the Goldilocks zone. Okay, so when we talk super safe, let's mm -hmm. ask about some of the people who you always want to have, you know, a little extra about. So first, babies. Can you use mushrooms? And, and we're talking specifically about these type of mushrooms that Host Defense has, that they've been, let's call it curated, and so we know exactly what's in them and how much is in them. I think that's very important. So are these safe for babies? So we suggest two and older, right? That babies got a developing digestive tract, um, babies working really closely with mom a lot of times to develop their immunity. And, you know, uh, under really significant circumstances and uh, under the supervision of a really well-educated integrative practitioner, you can potentially integrate those with mom and baby, but really for like general use, two and over. That's really where we want to um, point people towards. Um, at 18 months, that digestive tract is pretty well established, and you can introduce these really complex foods, and mushrooms are a complex food. So we want to give you a little bit of buffer time, so two years is the bit cut off for it. Perfect, two years. So next are people who may be immunocompromised in some way. Um, one of the most common being people who have some type of cancer and are undergoing a chemotherapy or radiation right. or what about what about people who have some kind of big stressor on their immune system yeah so there is a growing body of researched evidence that shows that mushrooms specifically reishi and uh, um, maitake and uh, even cordyceps have been shown to support people's immune system's response while they're going through chemotherapy. So uh, some of this research data is actually showing better results for those patients that are using both chemotherapy and mushrooms as opposed to either. So, uh, and now we always want to put a caveat on that, which is there are new uh, chemotherapy medications that haven't been tested with mushrooms. Um, and these tests aren't uh, completely inclusive either. So we always wanna be careful. You always wanna work with your integrative oncologist. Um, they'll test for things like liver enzymes. And so to make sure that you're not having an adverse event, they're gonna keep an eye on blood parameters to make sure that you know, your blood clotting stays within normal range and your white blood cells stay nice and strong. And so they'll do all the testing that you would be doing anyway, just to make sure that everything stays going in the right direction. 
Yes. So let's talk a minute about adverse events. Um, it's really interesting, I find, I know you, you're not going to be able to say something with it, you might shake your head a little, but um, whenever people have, are taking medicines, pharmaceuticals, and they're also taking supplements, and they have anything bad that happens, yeah. although we know pharmaceuticals got a string of side effects, they always yeah. blame it on whatever the supplement right. is. Um, and it's usually all those medicines you're taking not the supplement you're taking. So let's talk really adverse events from mushrooms. What do we have to worry about? Allergies? What, what, what do we need? Right. To so about? if you're allergic to allergies, so you've had an allergy test and it says you're allergic to the white button mushroom, chances are you're not allergic to all the rest of the mushrooms. That would be like saying you go in to get an allergy test and you say, uh, I'm allergic to celery. Does that mean you're allergic to spinach or to carrots? No. And um, typically, because those proteins are very different and your immune response is going after a specific protein in the food. And the same is the truth with mushrooms. So the chances are that you're cross intolerant is very, very low. There are some people that are allergic to all of the mushrooms. So you do want to you know, you do want to proceed very carefully. Don't, don't go in this in a cavalier type manner. Uh, but if you're allergic to mushrooms, don't take a mushroom product. It's really that simple. Um. <laughs> what you just said, if, if you're allergic to the white button mushroom, which is the most common kind, it doesn't mean you're allergic to all mushrooms. So you would recommend that people go get allergy testing. And I mean, I know there's a lot of different types of testing. There's allergies, there's sensitivities, they're right. mediated by different places in the immune system. So are you talking people with full-blown allergies, IgE, or are you talking sensitivity, IgE? Yeah. Uh, Let's Let's break yeah. it down a little bit because I right. know my, my audience is very intelligent. And sure. so if you have an IgE reaction, stay away. If you have an IgG response, then you can really proceed um, more carefully, but definitely proceed in a forward manner. Um, you know, your IgE reaction is super um, rapid. You get a potential anaphylaxis as part of that IgE response. And we want to make sure that people are safe. So that's, that's our driving force is we want to make you feel better. We want to help you feel better, not worse, right? So if you've got an allergy, avoid. Uh, if you have a sensitivity, if you have like a low grade systemic allergic response, in fact, some of these mushrooms may help mitigate that responsiveness and help downregulate IgG response by engaging two really key uh, mechanisms. And one is called interleukin-10. And interleukin-10 is a messenger molecule from your immune cells that tell all the rest of your immune cells to kind of take it down a notch or two and just kind of relax a little, don't get so overexcited. Uh, the other is something called interleukin-1 receptor antagonist. And IL-1 is what we call an acute phase immune response. And that's a, um, it triggers experiences like fever, achiness, uh, inflammation. So the, sh the change of how fluid moves in your body and uh, the accumulation of edema and fluid, right? And the, one, the receptor antagonist blocks interleukin-1 from triggering all those acute phase uh, responses. So these two uh, checks and balances in the host defense product are really amazing at helping bring that immune system back into that, that Goldilocks zone. And this is what's, what, and so I alluded to how uh, the host defense products are really safe like that. And those are the actual mechanisms that, uh, that are engaged physiologically to support that balance. Okay, so now we went into physiology speak, which is great for us for who are, you know, have our medical minds on, but let's go back into some layman terms yes. of what does this mean for helping with things like colds and flus? How do these products do that exactly? So when someone has the feeling of a cold, that feeling you get like the scratchy throat, the phlegm, the you know, achy body, the fever, 
those experiences aren't actually the bacteria or virus. What actually causes those feelings is our immune system's response to try and fight those bacteria or viruses harder, right? And so those cytokines, and sometimes it's referred to as a cytokine storm, create that feeling. The mushrooms, the host defense mushrooms, help engage their immune system so that they can more effectively fight those bacteria and viruses without engaging those symptoms, those feelings that are associated with those messenger molecules from the immune cells. So you get really strong activation of the cells and they work better and harder but you don't necessarily have the feeling or experience that comes along with those immune cells when they're working their hardest. Ah, so what's happening? Cause you know, I, I take these things, I go spray, spray, and I want to talk right. about how to use this now in a moment, but I go spray, spray, and I notice that, hey, 12 hours later, I'm all better. Or, you know, I had a, the last week I went across the flight, I had a long one, and the long one was like a day and a half, like maybe not even that long, you know. Um, which normally, you know, if somebody has a cold, it's three to seven days, flu, possibly even longer. I, I've met a lot of people, I've met some people that said, I got this cold and I'm still sick. And how long have you had it? Three weeks. Okay. All right. So, so, so let's talk about actually how to use these type of products. We're going to sure. talk specifically about cold and flu because we're in the winter. No, no, let me just, I'll tell you what I do. I'm not an everyday taker, but I know that if there is benefit from using some of the products on a maintenance basis. For sure. I personally don't do that, but I wait until something happens. I carry these in my bags all the time. As soon as I feel something, I'm spraying. So let's talk about people who are like me, who are not necessarily everyday users, because a lot of people don't want to do that necessarily, you know, take a bunch of stuff. What is the correct way when you feel something on to dose the product? Sure. So if you're gonna use the MycoShield spray that has five different flavors, so we have hopefully something for everyone out there, you would do three to four sprays every 45 minutes to an hour as you're going through your day. And what that's gonna do is that's going to help uh, impact what's called the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. And that's all the mucous membranes in your mouth and your throat, but also in your whole digestive tract. And that's going to get that immune system in the fight really quickly, really strongly. Um, you can also use a capsule product called My Community. And this is a 17 mushroom mix because some people don't like liquids. They don't want to do the spray thing. They, they're like, I personally love the sprays. I carry them with me whenever I get on a plane, which is a lot because <laughs> um, <laughs> I travel for work. Um, but sometimes people want to do capsules. And so if you want to get your immune system strongly engaged, you're going to take two capsules, maybe three or four times a day. But you're going to do both the spray and the capsule earlier in the day because they can in fact create some energy in your system they can be energizing so we don't want you to necessarily take them right before you go to bed because we want you to sleep sleep is crucial when you're sick so you know you gotta rest you gotta let your immune system do its work uh, and so you gotta sleep but during the day you know take three or four sprays of the Myco Shield spray every like hour maybe, and that'll get you a lot of that liquid and uh, the mushrooms and uh, some of the key compounds that help engage the immune response. Or take two capsules three to four times a day before seven, six, seven p.m. Okay, is there such thing as taking too much, spraying too much, or taking too many pills? Um, there's always too much, right? Everything has its upward limit. So, uh, you know, with the My Community capsules, eight capsules in a day is, that's really your upward limit. So you can do, and that's four grams of the mushrooms, and that's going to really get your immune system revved up in your day, right? Um, three to four grams is kind of, that's the upward limit of where you really want to take it. The liquid spray, the Myco Shield, um, six sprays is about an ml, which is a milliliter. 
and you can do um, six to eight milliliters as your upward limit. So that's three sprays, and if you do it every hour, um, and you do um, three sprays is a half an ml, two hours would give you one ml, uh, four hours would give you two mls, right? Six hours would give you three mls, and eight hours would give you four ml. So it just depends. Like you can go up to that three or four ml limit too. So you can do three to four sprays every hour or so, and that'll definitely keep you uh, within that limit. Okay, very. I, I just Does that like help people to, you know, yeah, very. Because you want to, you want to think: Are you doing too much? Um, yeah. Now, one of the pieces that I noticed about using this is it see for me it seems to work very rapidly and oh. so like you're saying you know I'll spray and then maybe I'll go back an hour and I'll spray and I feel kind of silly doing it but you're, you just verified that I'm doing what I should be doing yeah. <laughs> even though I didn't I didn't know what to do um you know intuitively that's how I get a lot of my effort <laughs> intuitively I knew what to do and exactly. I just noticed all of a sudden I'll spray spray and like within a half hour I'm like Wow, I feel really better. That's that's pretty amazing. What what just happened? Yeah. Can it, it work that fast or was that in my mind? Those liquids are rapid. That MicroShield immune spray, I literally so I, I travel anywhere from 12 to 20 days a month for work. And so I'm on um, six, 10 flights a month. And I literally, I do three sprays as I'm getting out of my car and walking into the airport. And then I do three sprays as I walk onto the plane. And then if it's a six hour flight, I'll do three sprays at least one more time when I'm on that plane. Because you are in an enclosed place. There's people breathing all over you. Some of the research on, um, you know, sharing microbiomes is really kind of like coughs and sneezes and even just breathing. Like you're putting whatever is in you out there and you're on a little enclosed tube flying through the country, you know, or flying through the air. And I call it a flying petri dish, but you know, <laughs> they, do <the> best they, can. <laughs> they do the best they can in the airlines. They really do, but there are some limitations with it. So, um, yeah, I I totally want to support and protect my immune response and make sure that it's working at its peak for sure. Yes, 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 yes. So let's let's seg seg segue over a little bit to. Um, you know, these days, there's a lot of people who are being affected by uh, candida overgrowth, which, in my opinion, is a problem with your immune system not being able to control fungus, um, and other things like that that are just, you know, downright strange and weird, but people are suffering from these things. So first, is there, first is there, a, is there a problem with people who have these type of overgrowths taking these host defense products? And the second more important question is, is there a role in, for these products in controlling something like a candida overgrowth? Sure. Okay, so just a little background for, in, for people. Uh, candida is a, a pathogenic mold. So um, fungi come in basically two categories. You've got your probiotic, right? And you've got your pathogens. Uh, and it's just like bacteria, like some people, like your pathogenic bacteria, like E. coli and staph and strep, and those are the ones that people know. And your probiotic bacteria are things like lactobacilli and bifidobacteria. Mm -hmm. And we take them to support our body's health and wellness, right? So it's the same way with mushrooms. Candida is a pathogen. But the interesting thing is from some of the human microbiome research out there, um, more than the the majority of people in fact have candida resident in their intestinal tract. So pretty much everyone you're gonna run across in the US has candida in their intestinal tract. But like exactly like you said, our bodies and our other microbes help manage those pathogens in our intestinal tract. So we can do that in a couple of ways. We can use some probiotics to support that. We can also use mushrooms for two different reasons. The first is that mushrooms have been shown in research to be prebiotic material. 
that selectively feed your probiotic microflora. So only like your lactobacilli and your bifidobacteria will thrive on mushrooms, while your pathogens don't. They actually have been shown to have some inhibiting effect on the growth of those pathogens in the intestinal tract, which is really cool. The other is that the mushrooms are gonna help in your intestinal tract, the immune signaling that happens when candida is present in the intestinal tract. So we're really getting a multi-level support from the mushrooms if we're struggling with some of these pathogenic overgrowths in our intestinal tract. So I'm gonna, to distill that down, it's not harmful to people who have these overgrowths and it right. actually is likely very helpful. Exactly. Okay, yay, dispel that. You know, because people will say, well, I can't take that because, and I'll be like, oh, that's not quite right, but um, yeah, they, let they me- got, uh, They went on a blog somewhere, you know what I mean? And. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like to joke about people having their medical degree from, you know, Facebook medical school, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Facebook group medical school, because I've been in some Facebook groups and, you know, community support is wonderful, but I've been in groups where it's the blind leading the blind and I'm just like, these people, I know why they're sick. <laughs> and um, when you say something in there that's the factual about how to help them, it gets completely ignored. So for yeah. those who are getting there, here we are right now at the University of Facebook Medical School, um, <laughs> talking on air, because this is where people are getting their information. Right. Let's talk about, you know, some people out there will say, well, I don't, I don't need a spray. I'm just going to go out there and eat a bunch of mushrooms. So talk about that. It's just right. like, I'm not going to, you know. Sure. Uh, you know what? It's not a bad thing, but you got to cook the mushrooms. Raw mushrooms um, convey no support to your body at all because uh, what mushrooms are made of uh, are compounds that we don't have enzymes in our digestive tract to break down. So you've... Okay. Okay, so these fibers in mushrooms are super dense, super tough, and unless you break them down beforehand, they don't convey any health support to us. So if you're gonna eat some shiitake mushrooms, slice them up really thin or dice them, saute them in a beautiful fat like ghee or coconut oil or olive oil and saute them for a good five minutes. And if you wanna throw some garlic and onions or uh, you know some other herbs, great. But before you do anything else with them, throw a little bit of sherry in there or cooking wine because there are a set of compounds that are uh, brought out with the water from the mushrooms when you cook them. There's a set of mushroom compounds that come out with the fat, and there are a set of mushroom compounds that come out with the alcohol, and they're all different. And if you do it all together, you get this really full ranging support. Wow. Okay. I don't even have any sherry in my house. And I'm just like, okay, now I know what I need to do. Cooking wine. So the raw, raw mushrooms, pretty okay. much just for, do, are they, are, do you think there's, they're harmful to the system in some way versus the so cook? Oftentimes raw mushroom, I mean, yeah, raw mushrooms have been sitting around a while and you can get some kind of funky films on them. And so, um, cause they're actually, a lot of bacteria do like to grow on mushrooms. In fact, they, it's a good food for them. So it's really best to cook them first. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm just thinking about those mushrooms sitting at all the salad bars. <laughs> right. Oh, it's nice. yeah. oh my God. <laughs> See, it's what, whatever it is that you, you think is the enemy is not necessarily the enemy. So, right. um, so, so let's just... Uh, other conditions that mushrooms might help. I know you have a, a, a really variety of products. Mm. Um, I've seen, like we were talking a moment ago or you know, a little bit back about cancer. And I've seen some interesting studies vis-a-vis -vis mushrooms and cancers. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we have to talk about it from the perspective of supporting the immune response. Um, uh, there's a lot of preliminary data out there that you really have to have a lot of scientific background to kind of understand. Um, but what we do know is 
when you use mushrooms, they engage the immune system's natural capacity to identify these cell mutations in our body and then take the next step to help destroy them and clear them out of the system. Um, you hear a lot of varying degrees of um, uh, like anecdotal data or people saying, oh, I used mushrooms and now my cancer is gone. Well, we don't know well, what else did they use. We don't know like what actually helped that process. There could have been a lot of things, right? But we do know really clearly that when you use mushrooms, especially um, the host defense mushrooms, they in fact support the immune system while you're in that really important process of finding and then destroying these cell mutations. Yeah, we've actually had a study done by Bastier in the University of Minnesota on the turkey tail that showed that it strongly engaged the immune response in women who had undergone chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. So it got their immune systems up and running uh, almost immediately after those really intensive interventions. Mm. Really important. Okay, so for those who are interested in, let's say, the prevention side of things, and you know, we want to stay healthy and yeah. preventing yourself from being overtaken by the mutant cells that we call yeah. cancer, yeah. is there a, a particular product that you recommend yeah. for that? We're saying, let's say you're somebody where you have a family history and people tend to get cancer mm -hmm. in the family and you decide, I'm gonna be the one to stay well, mm -hmm. what, what can I do? Which product suite would you recommend to them? Bam at seven. It's a seven mushroom product. You can take a capsule uh, in a capsule form. Uh, you would take one to two capsules at breakfast, one to two capsules at lunch, again, because it can be energizing. So you might actually feel really like, wow, I've got a lot of energy today. And, you know, I took my stem at seven and I'm feeling really good. My brain is firing really well. You know, I just feel overall better. And what you don't see is the strong immune engagement that's going to help your immune system do its job better. So you get these outward signs of, you know, just better experience in your day-to-day -day life. So those quality of life uh, indicators, but what you don't see is the support that it's giving to your immune system. So yeah, that stem at seven, and like I said, two capsules, either once at breakfast or, or again at lunch, uh, and that'll give you two grams, and especially for those people that, you know, maybe have some family uh, history of cancer and they really want to make sure their immune system's engaged and keeping an eye out. That's kind of the product I'd have you take a look at. Okay, so let's talk about some hormonal issues. Let's talk about female hormones and sure. some of the, the, the big deal things that happen in life. I was having a um, you know, dust up with a, another functional medicine practitioner who's a doctor who teaches and thinks every woman over a pertinent age needs to be on bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. And in addition, if they have low libido, I will give them low dose Cialis. This was his reason. See, I think, I'm, I'm just going to say this, I think women's health is messed up because men like that are running it. And then there's women <laughs> We're actually following that advice as yeah. opposed to other things that can be done to right. help women um, transition in life with, with things that are normal. So yeah. let's talk about mushrooms in helping regulate female hormones. <laughs> issues. One is the perimenopausal, menopausal women, um, and then there's the women who are younger, who are having things like, um, you know, premenstrual syndrome. All these are, are hormonal. So let's talk about first um, right. the, the menopausal type things. So we have a product that's called Mycobotanicals Woman, and it is four mushrooms and three herbs. So we've actually brought mushrooms and herbs together to complement each other, which is a, it's, it's been used for centuries, right? So we know that it has a longstanding efficacy. Um, the mushrooms are gonna help immune response and they're gonna help with a certain set of liver detoxification pathways. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with why that's important, um, both men and women, we create hormones, but then we have to metabolize them out of the system, right? So it's this process of we're creating and then we're clearing them out. 
if we don't clear out like specifically estrogen and some of the metabolites, those have been known to be particularly challenging for a lot of health issues. So these, what are called phase two pathways are strongly supported by the mushrooms. What in this product, there's um, chaste berry, which has been studied and has some really beautiful human clinical trials on impacting and stabilizing mood, especially mood associated with your cycle. So this could be maybe the younger or middle-aged woman that might be having some dysphoria or, or you know, some mood challenges associated with her cycle. But it can also be really helpful for something that's called prolactin. And prolactin is one of the key hormones that comes out of the pituitary that helps uh, balance and regulate the reproductive cycle, especially when you're seeing women go through perimenopausal menopausal concerns. So the product and the Vitex really support that balanced and stable hormonal system but it takes a couple of months to really kind of kick in. So you got to take it for like two or three months to really start to feel its impact. Is there Vitex in the product? That's Chase Berry, yes. So Vitex okay. is Chase Berry. Okay, I know that, but- Yeah, I, two know, different I, words, I sorry. both way and I'm like, what's Vitex? <laughs> yeah. So, okay, Chase Berry so, is Vitex. I learned, I didn't- Yeah, okay. so Chase so, Berry is the, um, that's what we call the common name and Vitex agnus castus is the Latin binomial or the taxonom uh, taxonomic name. Uh, We've also put shatavari in there and shatavari is an Ayurvedic herb that is used specifically as a female reproductive tonic. Really awesome for that perimenopausal menopausal experience. Uh, especially good for supporting what we call fluid regulation. So if you're having like some like dryness issues or what we would call yin deficiency, the shatavari is beautiful for kind of uh, helping support that uh, fluid balance and regulation in the female reproductive system. So uh, all together, it's a really great formula for women that have those cyclical challenges. Uh, but definitely, if you have a stable a cycle, don't take the, the woman's product. Take the Stamit 7's product to support your immune response. Um, it really, we know that these are hormone regulators. So um, don't, if you've got a stable cycle, that's not your product. Stamit 7 is your product. I see. Okay, what about for men? What's out there for <laughs> yeah. and and... <laughs> Yeah. So if you um, want to help with energy and libido, uh, you know, definitely take a look at pure cordyceps. Uh, the host defense cordyceps is really energizing. It's great for lung functioning too, but it does support libido and sexual functioning. Uh, <clears throat> we don't actually have a product for some of the more recognized men's health issues like uh, prostate support or uh, uh, things of that nature. And part of it is we want to pair herbs with it, but it's really challenging to stabilize saw palmetto, which is one of those really highly recognized male health herbs in a capsule form. Um, and quite frankly, uh, the liquid uh, encapsulated products aren't, you can't get them organically. So uh, our company is very dedicated to organic growing, uh, organic uh, encapsulation. Well, we want to make sure that uh, people aren't exposed to many of the pesticides and heavy metals that are rampant uh, on our planet and in our, um, in our supply chain nowadays. So we do a tremendous amount of testing to make sure that we're pesticide free, that we have some of the lowest heavy metal levels in the industry. And our heavy metals come in an order of magnitude below WHO standards. So really important that our products are clean, um, they're organically grown and manufactured. So. Yeah. So now we hit the big issues of women's issues, of cancer, one of the other big um, issues um, that is taking people down with health. 
um, cardiovascular, cerebrovascular sure. type diseases. Yeah. Is there any role for mushrooms with those class of diseases? Absolutely. So reishi, which is uh, in Chinese medicine often called the imperial tonic, right? And tonics are substances that support basically your whole body just a little so that the whole thing feels better. And reishi has some really nice research on its impact on cardiovascular functioning. So it can help maintain balanced cholesterol levels and it can help like triglyceride and LDL and HD numbers stay within normal parameters. Uh, it actually also helps the um, cells in your heart make energy better so that they function better. And it also can stabilize um, the uh, arterial tissue so that uh, it doesn't uh, react to substances like plaque and oxidized LDL so uh, rapidly. So it's a, an amazing stabilizer for cardiovascular function. Uh, the challenge with it is um, if you're on a blood thinner, this is one of the few contraindications that we have in our products. If you're on a blood thinner, Reishi has been reported to impact blood platelet aggregation, which is how quickly your, your blood clots. So you gotta be really careful with it. You really wanna work with a practitioner that <clears throat> knows what to look for and is testing your blood clotting because we don't want you to bruise easy. We don't, <clears throat> we don't want your intestinal tract to, <clears throat> excuse me, bleed or anything like that. So definitely uh, work with your practitioner. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Now, I want to I want to wrap up and I would like you to tell us, let's say, you know, there's a couple products that these are the best ones to have yourself. You want to stay well. Yeah. If you want to stay well, these are the two or the three I think you should sure. have on hand. So you have your airplane. First, we all want to know exactly what you are using on the airplane. Right. Um, and use, then what what we have in our what what should we have in our our toolkit? I use the Myco Shield Winter Mist Spray. And that's because I love the birch flavor. That's one of my favorites. But there's cinnamon, there's peppermint, there's licorice and citrus. So one for anyone. <clears throat> I also take lion's mane, which supports cognitive functioning, memory, and mood. And there's some beautiful human clinical trials on that. So uh, for people that want to support their memory and their cognitive functioning and maybe even help balance their mood, I take two grams of lion's mane every day. And then I also take Stamit 7 because it's just an all-around amazing immune and energy support. So for people out there, you can choose from Myco Shield Spray. If you have a lot of contact with people or if you're in a lot of public spaces, uh, if you're a person that doesn't have a super duper lot of contact with people, but you want a general sense of well-being and health and immune strength, that's your Stamit 7. If you're not into liquids, but you want to really support your immune system really strongly because you're kind of fighting something off, right? That's your My Community. And then if you want some brain and nerve support, go right for the lion's mane. Yay. So now we know all about mushrooms. <laughs> um, I just got, like I said, I love the products because, um, you know, I, I've, been, I've had these things. I go around all the conference, I collect things, and then I'm like, <laughs> that really works. And then I'm like, <laughs> right. okay, so, so mushrooms was one of my discoveries yeah. that this really works. So I put it in my toolkit. Um, and um, for people who want the toolkit, I'll put a link in, in there so you can get it. And there's um, host defense products there. I put one product there, but this, the reason why I did this is because I want you to know about a suite of products that you could use um, for this. And so you can pick the one that's specific to you. So now you know um, there's different products out there and who yeah. So one, one last time, contraindications. People on blood thinners with reishi, but any of the other mushrooms? Not really, no. It's really mostly just reishi for blood thinners. And then if you're on, um, uh, we also have a brain formula that has herbs and mushrooms, and that has ginkgo in it. So blood thinners for that one too. So I'm sorry I misspoke there. So blood thinners for reishi in our brain formula. 
Uh, lion's mane, no known interactions with any drugs or medications, so that's good for everyone. Um, <clears throat> I would say, yeah, uh, you know, if you're on medication, work with your qualified integrative healthcare practitioner just to make sure you got all your I's dotted and T's crossed. You know, we always like to support that. There are a lot of uh, really well-educated and knowledgeable integrative healthcare practitioners today. Uh, it's not like it was 20 years ago when I was, you know, doing this in a, in a private practice. So, yeah, we're, we're the the U.S. has come a long, long way in this. So, yeah, wow. it's good. I feel like I've been to so many classes, like, oh, my God, another class. It's so true. Many, build upon, build upon, build upon, um, and then you're able to help more people. I personally have people come to me because they don't want to use the other stuff. Yeah. They're like, but I'm the type of person who will say, if I think a pharmaceutical is the best thing for you at this point, I'm going to send you and say, please use Good. that right now. And then right. what we're going to do is we're going to work so you can transition off of that because yep. there's nobody's body who's craving any type of pharmaceutical. We need to correct what's going on underneath and then you can go out and, and be wild and free on um things like mushrooms um right. so jerry thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it i love host defense products i'm going to put links in so people know yeah. where to get the host defense products yeah um, and hostdefense.com we have a lot of information on the website we've got a great product catalog too so it guys kind of goes through and helps people make the right choice as to which product would be best for them Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Wellness Revolution podcast. If you want to hear more on how to bring wellness into your life, visit drveronica.com. See you all next week. Take care.